Hi, I'm Mike. I'm here with Jenny Hendry at Windy City Rails, and we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, Jenny's involved with the, uh, the Rails Bridge Women's Outreach uh, Workshops and uh, also the Chicago Ruby and Chicago JavaScript groups. Uh, so, Jenny, can you, can you tell me a little bit, you know, let's start with the, uh, the Rails Bridge Women's Outreach. Those, those were very interesting. Yeah, Rails Bridge started in San Francisco. By, it was started by the two Sarahs. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah May and Sarah Allen went to the uh, San Francisco Ruby Users Group meeting and looked around and said, why are we the only two women in this mm -hmm. room? And they decided that they would do something about it. So they started Rails Bridge, which is uh, training for, for women in basic Rails to get women yeah. started. Um, so there's a lot of them in, running in San Francisco. They run quite frequently, mm -hmm. but we're also starting to run them in other places. So... Uh, a year and a half ago, we had the first one in Chicago. Desi McAdam mm -hmm. started that. She had done them before. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Rails Bridge, anybody who's done it once as, yeah. as a student can easily run, as a student or a teacher, can easily run another one because <laughs> it's, uh, it's simple enough to do once you've done it once. So we had the first one here. Desi ran it. And then we've had two more since that I, that I have run. Um, and they are two parts. The night before, you have install fest, mm -hmm. so that everyone can be ready in the morning when the class starts to do programming. They're right. going to get everything installed. Some people, <laughs> they install on their own machine, so some people it takes a while, yeah. depending on the condition of their machine and what's compatible, all that stuff. But that we get that out of the way the night before, and then we have a whole day of programming. And it is introductory. Everyone is invited. Sometimes we get people who don't know what the command line is, for instance, right. and sometimes we get people who are experienced programmers in other languages, Music and we take them all and train them, give them a full day of training. And what we find is that some people, they love it, and they keep coming back, mm -hmm. and you see them again, and they get jobs in the field and all that, and some people find that they don't like it. But right. that is a valuable thing. They're no yeah, longer yeah, yeah. wishing yeah. and hoping they know. Yeah, they getting over that hump and saying, Oh, I really wish I was a programmer, and then doing it for a day or so and being like, eh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people yeah. are cut out for it, and some people aren't. But it, it gives you a, a a good amount of time to try it out and right. see. And they're they're well scripted too, so it it, it supports uh, just pretty much anybody any any level. You just sub 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 step. You go through it. It's yeah. That's one of the best things about it is that the curriculum is already set and it is open source, so it's out on GitHub. So if anybody wants to run their own training program uh, using that mm -hmm. the the curriculum, you can. And the install fest curriculum is also up on GitHub, so that makes it really easy to run one of those because right. the hard part is making a sensible curriculum of the appropriate length and the appropriate level. Well, that's done. Mm -hmm. We just have to get the people together to uh, to execute it. Yeah. And, you know, is this something that uh, people have uh, learned about? I mean, obviously, or I shouldn't say obviously, but the way I think is that people would learn about the Rails. How do, I should say, how do, you, how do you find people that might not otherwise have been exposed to Ruby or Rails? How do they find out about the, well, these tutorials? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there is a, a Chicago Women's Developers Group here, but yeah. that came about after the first Rails Bridge. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't know how the first one was publicized because yeah. Desi did it, but but it got a pretty good crowd and right. and now we you know we have a regular mailing list and we can send mm -hmm. send out announcements to anybody on the mailing list and then we ask everybody to have their friends sign up and mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but but I don't know what the method was to fill the first <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. you think that with with user groups. You can communicate to other developers, and there's channels that developers tend to, to follow on. But if you're trying to reach out to somebody who's maybe not necessarily already Beginners, in the industry, yeah, yeah. yeah, or they're not following Twitter and things like that, that they might mm -hmm. not know. So, yeah, that would be interesting to find out how how that communication goes out. Yeah, um, yeah. We, yeah, we should be doing more of them, and in that case, we should probably do something more formal yeah. about finding... And, People. Have you seen anybody come in through the Rails Bridge uh, workshops and then end up coming to user group meetings? Or yes, there have yeah. been uh, several of them who have done that. Uh, some of them you don't; they don't come back because they live far away. So right. that, that's all right. And some of them, as I said, find they don't care for it. But yeah, mm -hmm. we have seen some come back. And our and our and our biggest success is one of the people who came to the first uh, 
Rails Bridge, who had never done any programming mm -hmm. at all, but she'd seen it because she had friends who were in the business. She thought, you know, I want to try that from absolutely zero experience and exposure, mm -hmm. and she came to Rails Bridge, and she's done a lot of work since, and she now has as a job oh, as a really? programmer so yeah, it's great so, so it works so I mean yeah. it actually really did change somebody's life yeah you know, they went from not being a programmer to being, being a, a, programmer. a professional programmer yeah, and, and yeah. working in the industry that's yeah, great yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. uh, okay so uh, you know if, if I may ask you know with with women in the industry uh, mm -hmm. you know and, and it's obviously something that you want mm -hmm. you you feel that you put in your own time to mm -hmm. help teach other people mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you know, in user groups, there is a Chicago women's user group, uh, sh women Chicago women's yeah. developers mm -hmm. groups, and then, you know, the, the workshops, obviously. Mm -hmm. And there, for a little while, there was uh, Chicago Rubies, which was uh, actually um, more of a support network for, uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope I'm not mischaracterizing what the group was, but it was people who were the wives of uh, professional software developers who oh, got really? together. Oh, I didn't know anything they, about that. They, uh, yeah. they were supporting each other the way it's the way I understand what the, the group was. I, you know, is there something that, um, you know, having having been a woman, going to user groups and, uh -huh. and stuff like that, you know, has it been overall friendly? Um, something that you you obviously enjoy because we see you all the time. <laughs> yeah, I like going um, to user group meetings and conferences. Right. That's that's true. Uh, uh, well, it's a it's user groups themselves. I've found have been. Uh, perfectly friendly. There mm -hmm. are very, very few women who do show up, but mm -hmm. uh, I've never had any, any difficulties going to them, and mm -hmm. or and I haven't noticed any other, dif other people having difficulties going to them or being unwelcome or anything like yeah. that. Um, I think it's really it's just a reflection of our field, right. in our field in open source development. It, it's about three percent women. I've been. Uh, looking around and counting, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's about three percent. And it's true, not just in Ruby. It's mm -hmm. true in Python and the other open source areas. It's true in the U.S. It's true in Europe. It's true in the one place I've looked at in South America. It's true there too. So, right. it's a reflection of our industry, not of our user groups. They are just well. You, you said open source development. Now, do you, did you see something different in people maybe working on like? Uh, corporate platforms oh, yeah. or enterprises? Oh, it's very different, very different. Uh, uh, overall, there's about 25% women in our field, mm -hmm. but hardly any of them are in open source. Most of them really? are in uh, more uh, enterprise things. Oh, yeah. And uh, in uh, bigger and older companies have mm -hmm. more women, and that's an interesting thing. Why yeah. is that? Uh, one of the reasons is that bigger and older companies have HR departments who have uh, regulations that Corrective they enforce. Policies. Yeah, yeah, they're not. You're n there's not people just hiring their friends, mm -hmm. which in very tiny companies that's what it is. So that inevitably builds on itself. Yeah. If the first people started are a certain kind of person, and they only hire their friends, their friends are probably guys as similar. Well. Yeah, yeah, young yeah. fellas. <laughs> yeah, 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 just like them. So the tiny, tiny companies that we often have in our business. Uh, are less likely to have uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, unusual outsider types br brought in right. just because they're so small and they don't even have an HR department. Right, <laughs> and, and you know, and I think that might be something that having more people. I mean, because one thing I've observed is, is finding your network through user groups and and, mm -hmm. and finding uh, employers and making friends through user groups. Uh, that you know, encouraging more women maybe to come to user group meetings mm -hmm. and, and come out to conferences helps them to start to have th yeah. those women have, make those friendships where they get yeah. know, brought in. Yeah, but it, it's it's hard to get the ball rolling whenever you're talking about numbers that are so small. Right. And it takes a while. I know I went to Ruby Users Group for a long time before mm -hmm. I felt like I knew anybody. You know, it'd be like being in a room full of strangers for a while. Right. I didn't know anything about Ruby when I started. I'd been programming for years, but not in Ruby. I didn't know anything about Ruby or anything about the people in the, in the users group. I just showed up every month, and it took a while to settle in. And now, 
I know everybody and everybody knows me, but that is a long time later. That is yeah. years later. So it's it's not like it's a, it's a you show job. up once and everybody's your best buddy and you get six <laughs> job offers. No, that yeah. doesn't happen. Now you had to build the reputation and 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 get to know people, to, to actually know them beyond just uh, saying hi. How do you like the pizza? Yeah, it, yeah. it's it can be difficult, particularly for. The typical uh, nerdy introvert uh, yeah. <laughs> programmer personality, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that is one reason why uh, we have hack nights here. Mm -hmm. uh, Chicago Ruby st uh, started out; it had the, it was a suburban group and a city group combined. So then it had two meetings a month: one in the suburbs and one in the city. Mm -hmm. And I said to Ray who runs the group, you know, we should have a hack night, too. And Ray's yeah. an excellent delegator, and he said, okay, <laughs> you run it then. Yeah. So since then, we've also had a monthly hack so night. So we should do... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good delegating. Yeah. So the advantage of hack night, besides you get practice, of course, mm -hmm. that is extremely valuable for people is to practice their coding and to practice their pair coding if they don't have a chance to do that at work. It's also a chance to really meet people in not a strictly social uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the time before the presentation at a regular meeting is strictly a social kind of thing. Right. But if you are sitting paired up at Hack Night for an hour and a half mm -hmm. programming with somebody, then you get to know them. And so that's uh, another advantage of having Hack Nights. Yeah. And, you know, and this is just one thing, this is a, you know, it's strictly a gender question because obviously as, as a guy, I, I don't know what it's like for um, you know, I, I remember what it was like for me as a newbie mm -hmm. coming into Ruby and sitting down and being completely intimidated sitting down with established developers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you feel you know, like, a, like, oh, God, they're going to laugh at me because I'm such a dope. I don't yeah. know anything. Yeah, I, yeah I, was, I was a .NET developer who went to a hack night for RSpec, and Dave uh -huh. Jalemski is running this hack night, and I, and I barely knew Ruby at the time, yeah. much less Vim or any of that. Uh, so it was extremely intimidating for mm -hmm. me. Uh, but Again, I was also in a room full of guys, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I don't know if that made a difference. Like, is, is it something that, uh, you know, in your experience working with the women in the Rails Bridge, and also, mm -hmm. you know, coincidentally being a woman yourself, nah. uh, you know, that is that something that maybe is is off putting, or I don't know, because uh, for me, it's not. But that's mm -hmm. because I grew up with three brothers and no sisters, and I went to a college that. It was the second year that had women in it, so yeah. it, there were hardly any women there. And I majored in science at that college, so there were hardly any women there. Yeah. So I spent my formative years being one of the very, very few women or girls in a group, of, in a large group of people. Yeah. So, so to me, it, it it feels fairly normal. So, I, if I walk into a room full of people and it and it's all men with name tags, yeah. And, MacBooks, I, you know, I feel right at home, yeah, so yeah, it, this, I'm used to it. This is but it might be quite different for other people. I don't actually know. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Janine, for what you're doing and All also right. for taking the time to speak with me. All right. Thanks, Mike.